views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hi, welcome to Mission BX. Mission BX is a show that looks at nonprofits in the Bronx. It's a collaboration between the Center for Bronx Nonprofits at Hostos Community College and BronxNet. And I'm your host, Eileen Newman. So come with me today to visit Destination Tomorrow, a unique and wonderful LGBT drop-in center in the heart of the hub in the Bronx. I'm sitting here with Sean Coleman, who is the wonderful executive oh. director of Destination Tomorrow, and we're sitting in Destination Tomorrow's beautiful environment, beautiful office. It's not, I want to say office, but it's way beyond an office. It feels like so much more, right? Yeah, um, it does. It welcome does. to our living room. So. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and we're going to talk about what Destination Tomorrow does and also what it means because I okay. think there's there are wonderful things that happen here but I think it's also symbolically a really important addition to the Bronx and yes. to the, this particular neighborhood but before we even do that Sean tell me tell me what your vision was when you started creating oh. from nothing right. <laughs> destination tomorrow yeah from nothing um, the vision was to provide a safe space for LGBTQ people of color who happen to be residents of the Bronx um, to make sure that um, they weren't left behind, right? As the outer borough frequently um, services, LGBTQ services will go in other uh, areas um, with the assumption that we could, you know, you can get there, you can get there. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted folks to have to leave their home or their neighborhood to uh, obtain the services that were, I felt like are right for anyone that, that was a resident here. So my initial goal was just to make sure that nobody was left behind, right? That we, we all had a safe space. And then it kind of grew from that because the um, Bronx LGBT Center closed. And it's like, okay, now we, uh, we got to get serious now, right? And it has to become so much more than that. It has to be this community space now, not just for LGBTQ people of color, but LGBT. TQ anyone, and then extending beyond that. Um, so that was initially what it was, just making sure that no one got, got left behind. So full disclosure, when I met Sean, just to the audience, um, this, this, I couldn't have even imagined <laughs> what we're seeing here. Right, so, right. So just talk about the steps well, to get to this. Well, first we have to thank the We Are the Bronx program, right? Because I was a participant and graduate mm -hmm. of We Are the Bronx. And when I initially met you, and, we were, and I was telling you all of the dreams right. about Destination Tomorrow, and you were like, but are you getting paid? Right? <laughs> He's like, are you receiving it? And it's like, no. And you're like, well, how are you going to sustain yourself so that you can continue to grow this if you're not? And you kind of helped me map out what it would take to get to this point, right? And and part of that was not just getting paid, but just making sure that the resources that uh, that we obtained the resources we needed to be to be successful. Um, yeah, we started with absolutely nothing, right? We had uh, volunteer led. Uh, it was an online resource initially. I don't even believe we had a, a space at the time. I think no. we, we had we didn't even move into our space at the time, uh, and and we took it from there to um, moving to the Hunts Point Incubator and getting a small cubicle there so we can operate and take the services offline, and then uh, eventually growing it into what it has become. We've been able to triple our budget. And you say zero, but you triple that, right? <laughs> but we've been able to triple our budget. Uh, it was actually thirty-five thousand. We started with thirty-five thousand when we moved into the other space, and um, but not just that. We've taken it from volunteer-led to now we have a staff of ten, uh, um, all with a livable wage. Uh, so great. yeah, it was it was interesting getting to this point. 
so what were the steps that you took to, I mean, it didn't just happen because you decided, okay, now I need to have a salary and we need to have livable wages. I mean, there had to be things that made that happen. Um, you made that happen. A lot of studying. Who helped? It was a lot of studying. It was a lot of sacrificing. It was a lot of making sure that the Bronx Borough president and um, um, our city council leaders understood well, who we were and what we wanted to do. It was a lot of creating partnerships with other uh, local agencies, especially those local agencies that kind of took some of the overflow once the LGBT center closed. Um, it really, really was about building um, significant relationships so that we could learn by trial and error what, what the steps would be, right? Um, and then there were so many different moving parts because I had to understand programs, but not only did I have to understand programs, I had to understand fundraising. And not only did you have to understand fundraising, you had to understand um, staff management and those kinds of things. Um, and what, what um, being fiscally responsible looked like, right? And making sure that you were, we were fiscally responsible and that we were fully transparent with everything that we were doing so that we can gain the trust in the agency back in the borough. Um, so there were a lot of people that contributed to the success of Destination Tomorrow, um, whether it was someone sending an email about a free program that was going to happen that we could be a part of and get some kind of certification, or if it was just about bringing us in to, to have a discussion about what it is that we wanted to do and then figuring out how they could help play a role in that, the Bronx Borough President. So uh, it was just ideal that we were able to create these these types of relationships, and people were so um, receptive to having a queer center in the, in the Bronx. And you have just described everything that goes into being an executive director of a nonprofit. Yes, I, I, you were saying that. I thought he should teach a class in how to do this because it's it is it's juggling all those it's things. It's a lot of balls. In so, the air. what are all the different programs that exist here, just in the space that is completed and that we're sitting in? Our model has always been economic empowerment, right? Uh, we, we didn't want to come from this. Uh, there's nothing wrong with um, the HIV prevention model, but we wanted to kind of expand on it, right? And, and show like what some of the um, core issues were mm -hmm. and how those things needed to be addressed as well. So housing and health care, uh, not health care, housing, employment, um, um, substance use, all of those things that we felt were not being addressed. Um, we run a job readiness program. We do an SM partnership with Workforce One. We do uh, professional development as well because there's this learning curve. We hire community members and some for some this is their first uh, real job. So we do professional development to make sure that whatever learning curves there are that we can help smooth them over with it and they can continue to grow. Um, we do financial literacy in partnership with TD Bank and that was vitally important for us because we had so many clients that would come in for housing and um, one of the requirements was you'd have to work and, and save 30 percent of your income. Um, so you want them first to get an employ, uh, an employment that would allow them to be able to save 30%, and then you wanted folks to save that had never saved before. So we wanted to give, those, give them those tools. Um, we do HIV testing, of course, but only for those. It's not this hard sell, right? This is not our primary thing. But if you're here and you're comfortable and you're not comfortable going somewhere else, then we make sure that we can take care of it here. We do needle exchange, and our needle exchange was primarily for our trans clients. And what a lot of people didn't realize was because some trans clients didn't feel comfortable going to the doctor, there was still this heavy black market for, for things like hormones. And if you're getting um, hormones on the black market, nine times out of ten, you're getting needles from wherever. So we wanted to make sure that we had a, a safe syringe exchange program. Um, we do support groups. and. We kind of gendered them in the very beginning, right? So we have a support group for women. We have a support group for the, for the trans women. We have a support group for trans guys. And then we have a co-ed support group. We have a group called Healing Through Arts, where we use creativity and art expression to kind of like really get out some of those past traumas. We do counseling and case management. So we have a social worker on staff that can sit and address any of those traumas that are brought out that you may not be equipped to deal with. Um, I think I covered it all. Yeah, that's I think that's I, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Considering what you just talked about in terms of beginning, you yes. said, "Did I have a space?" Did and didn't have, have a space to do. So any this of those is an amazing accomplishment. So, Thank you. and we're going to talk more and go and look at what the place looks like okay. and talk about what's next. Yeah, next steps. So yeah. thank you. Yes. And we're we're going to come to to a break and then come back and talk some more. Perfect.
Welcome back. And now we're sitting in another wonderful office space of Destination Tomorrow. And we're going to talk to Janae, who is working with the Career Readiness Program. Janae, can you tell us a little bit about this program and what it does? So this program is a five-week um, career readiness program. We cover all bases of finding a job, landing a job. So we do um, some confidence building, we do resume building, and then we do um, mock interviews. And then I help my students one-on-one -on -one actually secure the job. And so tell me about the jobs. Uh, OK. Well, I got hired during sex workers outreach. So oh. I'm excited about that. Yeah, so tell us about that. Um, it's basically going out in the field and helping individuals that do sex work, like let them know about the program, give them items that they need, like yeah. sex, sex kits, everything, and let them know it's an okay place. Good for you. That's great. And how about anybody else? How about you? Yes, I'm going into security, um, VIP community service. Um, I actually do my front desk. Good for you. Wow. So you'll be meeting VIPs and taking care of them? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Actually, um, facilities and okay. residents. Okay. That's great. And you're... I want to um, pursue my acting career. Like in my 20s, I went through a depression. And Janae helped me through my depression since last year at Destination Tomorrow. And New Alternatives helped me. So many people helped me when I was younger. And I looked at my sexuality like it was a disease. And I was really scared. And it cost me a lot, a lot of friends because I couldn't, I couldn't feel confident to be myself as a man. Because I am a man regardless of what anybody says. But I have to say that Janae and Sean and everybody that I've known even since a little kid, I, I bless them and thank them for helping. That's wonderful. And it also, if, if I were going to ask you why this is important, you just told us why it's important to all of you. So good luck to everybody. And thank you. Thank you for letting us come into your graduation party. So now we have to wait for the pizza to come. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we just cut to a break. And we'll be back with more about Destination tomorrow. Welcome back. We're in a whole other part of Destination Tomorrow. So, Sean, can you tell us where we are and what happens here? Welcome so to our drop-in space. So, the plan here, as you see, we're going to keep the flow open, but this is actually going to be where um, clients can come and just hang out, a safe space, there'll be a computer lab. Um, again, we just really, really wanted to make sure that LGBT community members had a space to call their own. So this right. is the beginning of that, right? And, and then we want to take it up a notch because I knew I forgot to tell you some of the things that we do. We also have a clothing pantry. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to expand on that clothing pantry. We get hygienic products from um, the 40th Precinct. Shout out to the 40th Precinct. Oh, we yeah, get yeah. hygiene products from them. So on Saturdays, there'll be this drop-in that you can come. You can get clothing. You'll be able to take showers because we're putting brand new showers in here. Wow. You'll be able to wash your clothes um, and, and also get haircuts. So again, we just really want this organic space that folks can come in and, and interact with their friends and peers and have a really nice, comfortable, safe time. And it's right next door to your office. Yes. So right next door to the office. So my, my staff will be able to access this space easily. But the bigger secret about this space is that it's the Old Bronx Pride, right? Which We're located at 448 East 149th Street. And for those that remember, the third floor was the drop, the original spot next door, the original drop-in space. So it feels like I brought everybody home. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Sean, you must be so proud of this. Not yet, almost. Because you're so busy, you don't have time to we be have proud time. of it. No time for that. No time for that. So. Once, once it's built out and the, and the vision actually comes to, to, together and folks can actually access this space and, and they get an opportunity to utilize the, the services, then I think um, 
I think at that point, I was like, okay, we've achieved what we really, really wanted to achieve. That's great. And thank you. Thank you so much for letting us invade your space no while worries. you're on a busy afternoon. No worries. So. You have to come back. Once this is done, we're going to we do will. an open house and we'll invite you back. Yes, we will. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm sorry, but that's all we have time for today. But we'll be visiting other nonprofits in our next show. If you want to see other shows that we've done, just go to bronxnet.tv or if you've missed a part of this one and want to watch it again. And please join us next month when we go to visit another wonderful, impactful nonprofit right here in the Bronx.